Hey, welcome back. Welcome back to the channel. I hope you've had a wonderful week. I had a busy one. I had a busy week last week. It's been non-stop since I got back from my trip. But it's good to be busy because I've already been able to start working on a completely new project, which is something that I want to talk about today. I'm currently in the post-production stage of a short documentary that I shot with Dan Flinter. You might know his work from Instagram and YouTube. If you don't, I would highly recommend you go check him out. I will leave the links to his work down in the description below. I will give you a little snippet now of the documentary uh, or some of the clips that we've shot for the documentary. I can't really share too much more because I do want it to be a surprise when uh, the project comes out, but I'll explain a little bit more about what I want to accomplish for this series after you've seen the clip. Now, there we go. So just a little insight into what we have uh, been working on. Something exciting is coming. Uh, I can't wait to share the final film, but in the next few weeks of videos, I'm gonna share uh, the process of producing a short documentary like this, starting today with the pre-production stage of things. Next week will be about the production of the documentary, and then third and final week will be the post-production side of things, uh, and then the final documentary will hopefully be launched. So a little build up up to this small little project that we've got going on. Now, I'll just give you some context for this project. It's a passion project, uh, didn't have any budget, it is simply doing it because it's something that we wanted to create. And that is kind of the deepest it goes. It is not any sort of major project. It is just something that we wanted to create. Pre-production is a really important stage in making a documentary, a film, any sort of thing. And something that I have often overlooked in the past, and I think many beginner filmmakers do. It's not the most exciting stage of things. Everyone just wants to be out there filming, but to be able to create the best film, pre-production is incredibly important and so useful for helping days go smoothly. So today I'm gonna to talk a little bit about my pre-production process for this documentary. Hope that you find it useful. Hope that there are little things you can take from it potentially and implement into your workflow. And just remember as I go through this that one, I am mainly a cinematographer. So pre-production, I often do slightly differently and some of these things wouldn't be up to my role. But for this, I've had to delve into some elements that I'm not usually involved with. Uh, this is as much of a learning curve for me as it is for anyone else. This is important because you can't go into a project blind, having these enormous, great big ideas of what you want to produce without any realistic idea of what is gonna be possible. Now, having those massive, great big ideas is really good because it can help generate different you know, ideas and different creative ways of approaching every different film. But at some point during the process, you need to narrow down what is actually possible into you know, your film. And to be able to do that, you need to understand the limitations of your film. Now, this film is a short documentary and we only had one day to shoot it. So it is going to be around uh, six to eight minutes long and we didn't have a budget. So those are the kind of limitations that you instantly can put on your ideas to try and you know make your ideas fit the box and, and fit the idea of the actual project. Um, understanding this, like I say, is important because it helps give your project some direction. Once I have the kind of limitations for the project that I can then tailor everything towards that. Now, one of the things that is important when you're understanding the brief is also understanding the objective of the film. And I find this helps give the film a lot of direction as well. And to be able to do that, you need to step into the second stage of pre-production, which is having conversations with the subject and your team. Now, in this case, I knew that I was gonna be filming this documentary solo. It's a small project, no budget, so it was gonna be a solo project, hence why I've had to take all of these other things into account myself. Knowing that it's a solo project, the only person I was really having these conversations with was actually the subject. Luckily, Dan knows a lot about what it, what it takes to create these films because he is a photographer and filmmaker himself. So that helps bring a bit of a two-way conversation into these types of things. But my conversations with him are slightly different to those that I would have with a crew. Now, my conversations with Dan are important because they allow us both to get on the same page about what we're creating. At the end of the day, I'm documenting his story 
and his journey. To be able to do that, I need to be able to understand where he's coming from, to be understand how he wants to tell his story in the best way, and ultimately make him comfortable to be able to tell that. You can, as a director, try and take too much control of someone's story, and I ultimately think that is a mistake I made right at the beginning of this project. I was trying to be a bit too, you know, narrative or shaping the narrative a little bit too much. Uh, but once I'd realized, I took a little bit of a step back and just kind of let it fall into place. Now, when I'm having these conversations with Dan, one of the things I was really making sure to do was to make sure he was comfortable with everything we were going to talk about. In a documentary sense, you might just think that you can ask whatever you want to your subject. And for some people, they will be absolutely okay with this. But my biggest piece of advice would be before you get to that stage is just check with them if there's anything about their life, their story that you could ask about that they wouldn't be comfortable with. And that's important to note. Some of these things you just won't simply be able to ask because it's not something that they are willing to talk about. And at the end of the day, there's no point making a film if it's going to upset someone um, or, you know, create a bad relationship with someone because all of these documentaries about your relationship with these people. Uh, so it's important to, again, understand those limitations of what you can and can't talk about. Now, importantly, why is this important? Why is it important to have a comfortable character, a comfortable subject? Now, for someone like me who sits in front of a camera uh, very frequently and talks rubbish, uh, I am pretty comfortable talking in front of the camera and I can pretty, pretty normal, like, the irony of the fact that I couldn't get that sentence out. I'm normally pretty comfortable on camera and I can get out my thoughts pretty clearly. For someone who isn't maybe used to sitting in front of a camera, it can be difficult to formulate their thoughts. So something I do to help break this barrier of discomfort in terms of talking to a camera is one, make sure it feels very conversational when you're doing your interview with your character. But in the pre-production stage, what I like to do is just give my subject an idea and discuss with them some of the topics that I might ask about. Now, I'm not saying I'll tell them exactly what I'm gonna ask them in the interview, because I still want that to have an element of surprise. But I'll tell them a little bit about the topics that I'm planning on talking about. And that way, when we are discussing, they can tell me if there's anything that they're not comfortable with. Having a comfortable character on the screen for me is really, really important because when they're comfortable, people will be able to express themselves a lot better and they'll be able to uh, be way more genuine with who they are and the way that they go about telling their story. Now, this will massively help elevate your story and help it feel authentic to that person. And ultimately, that's the goal with the documentary is telling the story of this person. So if you can do anything to help improve that, then you're doing a good job. So this is the way, one of the ways that I go about uh, helping them feel comfortable on screen. And that is a really important part of those, that conversation stage with your um, subject. Now, the conversation stage doesn't just end there. It's one of those things that kind of just goes on throughout the whole process. Now, before I get on to talking about the gear, one of the things I really like to do and I would encourage you to do is once you've done these two stages, you've had the conversations and you have understood and kind of had to think about the brief and the objectives as well as also, you know, the scale of the project. I like to put everything on a document and that way I can just see everything visually and then I can also share it with anyone involved. Um, in this case, it was Dan. So he could understand, you know, when we were going to meet, uh, where we were going to shoot he can also give his input on those things. If he has a location that he'd like to go to because it's relevant to his story, he can put that in there and I know where we're gonna go and I can have a little bit of think about how I'm gonna shoot in these locations. It's all about preparing you to be able to shoot the best documentary you possibly can. I'll probably throw up parts of my document uh, that I shared with Dan, but I will probably redact some parts so I don't ruin you know, what we're gonna talk about. <laughs> Choosing which gear you're gonna use is a really important stage of any production, but in particular documentary. And it's not necessarily about choosing the camera that has the right specs. Now that is important, but it's not really the most important thing about the camera that you're gonna to use to uh, produce this documentary. Having a camera that shoots 6K, 4K, 120 FPS, all of these things are great. But ultimately what's gonna really make the difference is the size and the portability of your kit. For most documentaries, you're often going to have to follow a character around an element of their life. And this can often be quite fast paced. And in documentary filmmaking, without having to use the word 
run and gun, uh, you need to be able to be adaptable and be able to be versatile with your kit and quickly change from one scenario to another. Having a kit that can be quickly changed between running on a gimbal or uh, having an interview set up to handheld is really helpful to be able to help you capture all of those uh, smaller moments that aren't necessarily as pre-planned. Not that anything necessarily is super pre-planned, but um, it just allows you to capture those smaller moments that are a little bit simpler. So that can really help guide you in your gear choices. So for example, for this project, I wanted something that was in that kind of run and gun style of camera kit. I wanted something that was smaller, lightweight. I can just grab film, get a shot, move to the next place, all of these types of things. So I decided to take my A7 IV, my, uh, two le my two prime lenses, the 20 and the 85, a monitor, but that was it. I didn't bring, well, and a tripod as well as microphones, all of these little things, but it didn't go beyond that. I didn't bring a gimbal, uh, didn't bring in like an easy rig or anything, not that I have one, but I didn't rent the one. I didn't go out and get you know more and more lenses. I knew that what I had was versatile enough to capture everything we needed to, and this is what fits the budget as well. So all of these different elements of pre-production allow you to just realize what is possible within your production and help guide your choices. I know that my camera can shoot 4K 60 and 4K 24 and all of these different things. So that was good enough for what we were going to produce. And understanding that is important stage, is an important stage of the pre-production process. All these tiny little elements that will help you on shoot day. That's what pre-production for me is all about, is preparing myself to have the best possible production day by giving myself all the information that I'm gonna need, uh, preparing all my gear the way I'm gonna need it and have my questions ready for my interviewee. That is essentially my approach to pre-production. Um, there's a lot of information there. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to drop them in the comments. I am more than happy to answer. This is the first video in a series of three videos. The next one will be about production of this documentary. I can't wait to share it with all of you. Thank you for all of your support over on the channel. I honestly really, really appreciate it. Uh, and if you did enjoy this video, maybe consider subscribing and then you can come and hang out every week with me um, as we chat about cameras and we chat about filmmaking and all of these different things. So uh, yeah, I'd love to have you in this community of filmmakers and creatives that we're building over here. Anyway, thank you so much for hanging out with me this week and I'll see you all next week.